Welcome back time to Newcomers Alike to another episode of Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Case 4 continues today, where we question this creepy mother freaker. Yay! That's so not true! Just hold on to your breeches there. I'll wrap up this interview in a jiffy. Interview? So, guard! I think I know what's going on here. Guarding rooms is my life. What else could I possibly need, end quote? No! How many times do I have to tell you this? Look, I've got work to do. You deal with him. Um, did you come here to interview the guard? Oh, wee, what a pickle. Accused wouldn't talk. Had to interview someone or go plumb crazy, end quote. Huh? I should have guessed. Where are my manners? Name's Brushel. Spark Brushel. I'm not picky. Journalist just closes eyes, writes. End quote. It's a nauseatingly strong mint smell every time he grins. Until you've been interviewed by me, you don't know what thrilling is. Wild romp through crossroads of mayhem, madness. End quote. I can see that. He's writing something again. Well, if he's a reporter, maybe he knows something. I guess so. Speak to me, you creepy motherfucker. So, Mr. Brushel, you're a journalist. Ah, me. Look, let me state one thing for the record here. I yes I'm the interviewer. You understand, yeah? I'm the one asking the questions here. End quote. Okay. For instance, you think a movie director watches movies? Probably does. Exactly! I knew you'd understand. Huh? Okay. So, the night of the murder. You were at Drew's studio? Who, me? Look, let me state one thing for the record. I yes? I may look calm and collected, but I'm busy, real busy, always on the road. Journalist always buys one-way tickets, never looks back, end quote. I can understand that philosophy, but... You want to know the thing about one-way tickets? Once you use them, they're gone. All because you have to give them to the guy at the airport. True enough. But don't they give normal tickets away too? Exactly. See, it's the same thing. What is? Uh. So, you went to do a story on Drew Misham. And he never had a story done about him before? That's right. Look, let me state one thing for the record here. What? I'm sure you're going to want to know about my source. What tipped me off to Drew? Why do the interview in the first place? Well, yes. Look, it's like... Oh, I've got it. Say there's this burger joint with fabulous ketchup. You think the burger guy's gonna tell me where he got it? At the supermarket, maybe? Exactly. See, that's what I'm talking about. 
I think I may have actually understood that one. Well, there's nothing I can talk about, really. Walls have ears. Eyes. Especially glass walls with speakers. End quote. Right. Guess we'll leave, then. Ah, but... Since you're here... Might as well tell you a tidbit of news I saw. Just for the heck of it. Sure, tell us. Just for the heck of it. I remember it like it was yesterday. I'd seen a movie on a trip and wandered into this burger place with amazing ketchup. When an article in a tabloid caught my eye. Famous oil painting stolen from art dealer's gallery, end quote. I believe it was. An oil painting? Happens every day, right? But I thought I'd seen that painting somewhere before. A painting of a giant peach floating down a river. Someone stole an oil painting? Of a giant peach. Journalist can smell scoop better than burgers, end quote. Oh god. Okay, well, did that particular painting perhaps look like this one? Ah, right. Let me go on the record here. I yes I know what you're going to say. Russia, take this! Write a brilliant column, end quote. I don't think so. Look, but I write brilliant columns about one thing, and that's food. Try to understand. What could he possibly be writing? He didn't listen to a word I said. Okay, um, tell me about... This hidden painting, maybe? Nope. Not the hidden painting. There's, There's gotta be a fourth chat option. I just don't know how to unlock it yet. What about, um... Probably not that one. What about Vera's card? Nope. Nothing on Vera's card. Let's just keep presenting stuff to him until he tells me something. Nope. Nothing there. What about this envelope? Nope. That'd be a bad idea to give that to him anyways. He'd probably just open it. Mmm... What about this coffee mug? I'm surprised he doesn't react to the paintings, to be honest. Hmm. Attorney's badge? Nope. Hmm. What about this frame? Still a no. Okay, where am I supposed to be going then? Uh, there's gotta be something I'm missing here, so let's move. Let's go back to write anything. I don't think Phoenix has anything to say. Uh, back to Drew Studio, maybe? Ah, October 7th, Drew Studio. Well, how'd it go? Find anything out? Actually, there was one thing I wanted to check with you. Oh, what's with that scary face you're making? And what's with the I know something but I'm not telling face you've got going, Emma? Like I'm gonna tell you. It's a good question. Talk to me. No. Uh... Okay, don't talk to me then. That's what I thought. Uh, what about... Did I even get anything useful that I can talk to Emma about here? This painting came from behind that dresser. Oh, uh, yes. So? It was stolen, no? <sighs> I was hoping you wouldn't figure that out. Do you think you could tell us a bit about this? I suppose. It's what you think. Drew Misham was a forger. A forger? Forger, huh? Alright, so we did have some extra chat options we need to talk about with Emma here. So, what exactly is a forger? Well, basically, it's someone who makes forgeries. Fakes, in other words. Fakes? 
Do you have to question everything I say? Copies of an original. Exact copies. So precise you can't tell them apart. Well, why not just photocopy them? The big problem with forgeries is that people try to sell them as the real article. It's a crime, of course. So, Drew Misham was... A criminal? I'm afraid so. He received money to create elaborate forgeries. To supplement his work in illustration, I guess. I see. Actually... That's why I brought this here in the first place. What do you mean? When you're trying to determine if a painting is a forgery, the rough sketch underneath can be a valuable clue. So the rough sketch is like practice for the real thing! Like doing a magic trick in front of a mirror before you go on stage. But not in the case of a forgery. Not necessarily, anyway. You know what the finished product is going to look like after all. Oh, yeah. I guess you would. That's why I brought this. I'm going to use it to see what's under the paint of the finished pieces. I get it now. Not that I really needed to go to such lengths. Seeing as how one of the paintings was only half finished anyway. Still, it'd be neat to see Mr. Misham's rough sketches. Kind of like what he was drawing when he thought no one was looking. True. That would be interesting. And maybe valuable for a case. You should try buttering her up, Apollo. Again? Good lord, how much butter are we gonna put on this lady? Flattery will get you everywhere, they say. And butter is awesome! Yeah, yeah. Tell it to the judge. The beard approves of this flattery. Hmm. Maybe I should ask Emma to help us out. Well, there. Is there anything else that I can do here? Maybe present the hidden painting? Let's see. Emma, about this painting from behind the dresser there. Hi, yes. Okay, we've already been through that line of conversation. So, uh, what about this landscape? Um, I kind of wanted to see the rough sketch under this painting. And I was wondering if your tool there might do the trick. My tool? Oh, fine. Fine. Just this time, though. Let's check it out! Alright, here we go. Okay, let's print this one out. I don't know about you guys, but this is looking a little bit sketchy to me. Ow! You're not funny. W what the heck? Wow, he really blows! The finished painting isn't anything like the rough! Devices like mine didn't exist until recently. He probably thought he could draw any sort of thing he wanted to for the rough. What do you mean? Well, in the past you could only analyze the composition of a rough sketch. Composition? In other words, the traces of the charcoal between the paint and the canvas. So, you could tell if there had been a rough sketch. But not what it looked like. Ah, I think I follow you. So, in essence, it wouldn't matter what was underneath the finished painting. Some pros would actually paint out a rough sketch entirely. Then do a completely new painting on top of that. 
So Mr. Misham was drawing whatever he wanted before painting over them. Possibly. Is there a problem with that? Not particularly, but something about the sketch itself is kind of odd. You're awfully silent all of a sudden, Apollo. You think we could check out one of the other paintings? Well, sure. You like this detection stuff, don't you? Alright, let's try this one. This one, too! What's wrong, Apollo? You look so serious all of a sudden. Um, you think I could just look at the last of these? Oh, um, fine by me. Knock yourself out. It's a house or something. Noodle stand. W what in the heck is all this? I hesitate to ask you why you're getting so excited. You sure your device isn't leaking some kind of strange radiation? Trucy, look at these three sketches. Do you notice anything? <gasps> now you're both white as sheets. What's going on? These sketches are of the three cases I worked on. What? The murder in the poker room at the Borscht Bowl Club. The dead man pulling the noodle stand. And then... The events that transpired during the Gavinor's concert. What could it mean? How could he have painted those things? And why? That's what I want to know! Wait, is Drew Misham... your father? Give me a break! Does that even seem remotely possible to you? What the freak? I've never even heard of any Drew Misham before. I didn't even see a picture of him. But they were my cases, drawn on his canvas. Every single one of them. It couldn't have been a coincidence. Just who was this Drew Misham? And what did he have to do with me? To be continued right now for about 10 more minutes. In an save, as per usual. My god. October 8, 948, District Court, Defendant, Lobby, number 6. Good morning! So, you're Vera, right? I'm Trucy. Trucy Wright. If that's right with a W. Uh, but not right, right? Um, we're on your side. You can tell us anything. Please? Good morning. Ah! She, she, she speaks! Hmm, not bad, not bad. But I think you do better with a little smile, you know? You're so pretty. You need to sell yourself, you know? Trucy, let's take it easy, for starters. Thank you for taking my case. Okay, well, that's a start, I guess. There she goes with the nail polish again. And that's great, really! It's so cultured! Want to try? Oh! Really? Ugh. <sighs> The victim, Drew Misham, was a forger. 
And a stolen painting was found in his studio. A life of crime, really. And maybe one that led to his death. October 8, 10 a.m., District Court. Courtroom number three. Well, we will now, uh, <laughs> begin the, uh, trial of, uh, b b b b b Is the judge okay? His voice is all raspy and he's looking around all nervous like. Uh, <laughs> the repercussions of today's trial will most likely be felt for a long time. And may indeed alter our legal system forever. Today is a test of the jurist system. And the first step toward the new order in our courts. Daddy's secret mission. The jurist will function like, well, a jury. It is hoped their inclusion will help the courts to better reflect the people's will. Why aren't there any jurists in the courtroom? Three closed circuit cameras watch this courtroom at all times. The jurists have access to everything that transpires. Jurists, Judge Vell and Judge Cool. Now see here, Prosecutor Gavin. I was going to say that. Ah, my apologies there, Judge. Aha! Jurist! Uh, today, uh, ah, the, the beard's out of my ears. The judge today is trial coolly! If you would be so kind, the beard demands it or something. The jurists are unbound by the letter of the law. They don't affect the trial with evidence, but by their feelings. And we are about to find out just what effect they're going to have. Very well, Prosecutor Gavin, the details of the case, if you would. The victim is the painter, Drew Misham. He was killed in his own studio. His coffee was poisoned. By whom, you ask? By none other than the defendant, Vera Misham. There wasn't any poison in the coffee. Akhtun. Someone has been doing their homework. Indeed, poison was not present in the coffee, but on the mug itself. The mark? Ah! Residue was found on the rim, I see. The autopsy report describes the manner of our victim's death. The court accepts this as evidence. Misham's autopsy report added to the court record. According to this report, the victim's death was caused by a troquinine poisoning. A chemical compound that does not occur naturally. Lethal dosages are mere 0 .002 milligrams. A touch of atroquinine in the body, it's pronounced that way, by the way, is a touch of the Reaper's scythe. Very well, Prosecutor Gavin. You may present your witness. I have for you today a simple man for a simple case. A man who witnessed the murder in its entirety. Oh, no, not him. That journalist, no doubt. Jesus Christ! Superstar. The witness will state the name and occupation. Ah, right. Well, for starters, my name's Spark Russia. My job is a lone observer of the world. In other words, a freelance journalist, right? Ahem. <clears throat> if you don't mind, I'd like to say something here for the record. Yes, Mr. Brussel? I dislike conclusions, specifically the jumping to aspect of conclusions. Reconceptions make park sandbox of endless desert waste, end quote. But you are a journalist. You said so yourself yesterday. Well, that's true, yes. But you must understand I stand before you today a man with a dream. I'm offering you my testimony in exchange for exclusive rights to the story. Scoop turns Mr. Brushel into that Mr. Brushel, end quote. Let's hear your testimony then, shall we? 
A simple case, eh, Gavin? For me, the jury is still out. The Journalist Story I visited the studio around 9 o'clock that night to do the interview. The first outsider to enter the atelier! Journalistic history made, end quote. His daughter brought us coffee right after we started. And you know what happened next. Star falls, end quote. No one else entered the room besides her the whole time. Huh. That does sound like a simple case. Unless you are the one who poisoned him. What, what, what are you saying? Judge! Ahem. Need I remind you, the cameras are rolling today. I felt the need to be a bit dramatic. You didn't do it, did you? Me do a thing like that? Come on, that's like... Newsmaker making the news. End quote. Or even contemporary witch hunt. End quote. I know, wild accusations, rock courtroom, end quote. Wipe that fucking smile off your face. <laughs> rock, indeed. Prosecutor Gavin sure looks like he's having fun. I'm so happy for him. Ugh. Very well, Mr. Justice, your cross-examination, please. All right, so let's see here. The journalist story. What do we got? Visited the studio around 9. First outsider to enter the atelier. Journalistic history made, end quote. His daughter brought us coffee right after we started. And you know what happened next? Star falls, end quote. No one else entered the room besides her the whole time. Something fishy about that statement. Um, let me see here. Hmm. Food poisoning doesn't count. Huh. Should I get him to talk about something else? Um, What about the star's coffee? You say Mr. Meesham had the coffee, too. But did you actually see him drink the coffee? Of course! He who sees it wins, but he who says it wins bigger. End quote. I live in a man-sees-dog-eat-dog-and-writes-about-it world. And yet... Yet? I guess I can't say I saw him drink it, really. He had one so-called sip, if that. Man puts lips to mug, drinks, end quote. Ah, oh, that poison is quite virulent, I hear. My stomach did a so-called somersault, since I gulped down that coffee without so much as a second glance at it. Wait, maybe something's there. Some kind of so-called trick. Anyone want to venture a guess? For the record? Does this guy have a pause button? Well, Mr. Justice, did you find that testimony valuable? Yes. The victim drank his coffee, then immediately fell over? Oh, yes, yes. You can go to press with that one. Your Honor, this is a vital piece of information. Please add it to the testimony. Very well. The witness will add this to his testimony. Vital. Right. All right. He had one sip of that. The next moment, he was on the floor. Hmm. Why isn't there something that attests to the time of a troquinine in here? Oh, my God. What is it? There we go. You know what I have a problem with? A particular property of the poison used, the troquinine. That's what we were supposed to present to get the property. God dang it. Oh, Prosecutor Gavin was quite clear about the poison. A lethal dosage of 0 0.002 mega MGs, whatever the crap that is, and a beard is not a scientist, paralyzes the central nervous system. Milligrams. Ah, see, I knew it. If you drank that, even you, Mr. Justice, would be reduced to a quivering pile. Why are you using me as an example? Unfortunately, we weren't told everything. There was a vital omission in Prosecutor Gavin's information. An omission? A troconine is as virulent as he says. 
But death doesn't come upon a gesture. Not immediately. That's because Atroquanine is slow acting. And new, Atroquanine is waiting for you. See you guys on the next epic episode of Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney.